Guys, Brian here for Yes You Can Play Guitar and I want to share with you today 10 things I've learned about being on YouTube for one year. Stick around. Friends, 10 things I have learned from being on YouTube for one year. As we know, I celebrated my one year anniversary back in August. I really wanted to make this video, not just for the people that watch my channel, but for people out there who have an interest in YouTube or might be starting a YouTube channel, or just about for YouTube in general. People that have an interest in it. Number 10, you can always get better. I had someone recently comment on one of my older videos, like as in a year ago. And I actually said, you know, I remember this video and I went on it and I watched it and I was just cringing going, oh my God, look at the, look at the video, look at the lighting, look at how I look, look at, sometimes when you look back at old videos, you're like, oh my God, but you know what? We all go through this, even the top YouTubers. Now, number nine, lighting is everything. Of course you have to have good content. But lighting is so important. I look back at some of my older videos and go, oh my God, it's still a process for me. I'm still nowhere near where I want to be. But for YouTube videos, I really learned the value and the importance of good lighting. Lighting, man. Number eight, if you do YouTube, it's like being a musician, you're creative, or an artist, you're creative. You Sometimes you get waves of inspiration and ideas. And it's always good to strike when the iron's hot, but sometimes you can't always do that because of something going on. Maybe you're on a trip or something, or you're going to the hospital. But you know what? Have a file on your phone and write down all your ideas. And when you do get to record, remember, expect the unexpected. Things do happen. Important phone calls come in. One time, back in the spring, I was really inspired and I had all these ideas for YouTube I wanted to do. And then I noticed all these trucks and heavy machinery on the road in front of me. And there was construction going on for almost three months. Every day there was jackhammers and people ripping up the road and backhoes and all these different. And I'm like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? This is what's going on out in front of the house today. The whole street's ripped up, although they've paved in a lot of it. It's looking better. Might actually be able to leave the house tonight, but yesterday it was just a mess. They had the whole road ripped up, working on the water main. So this is what's up. I had to adapt by trying to do more of my videos either early in the morning or late at night. It wasn't the most pleasant, but sometimes you gotta expect the unexpected. You wanna strike when the iron's hot, but sometimes things happen. Friends, number seven. When it comes to friends and family, Keep your expectations low when it comes to YouTube. What do I mean by this? Well, if you look at the reality of YouTube, a lot of people are into YouTube, but there's still a lot of people out there that don't, believe it or not, in this day and age, they don't really understand. They don't even know how to have a Gmail account and how to even subscribe on YouTube. What I'm saying is, when you have friends and family, in the beginning, you need subscribers. So you're almost begging your friends and family to subscribe and a lot of them don't. And sometimes it's hard to not take that personally. You're thinking, wow, like, I'm not even worth the click of a mouse. It's just the way it is. And you'll have a lot of friends say, oh yeah, I'll do that, I'll do that, and then they don't. Don't take it personally. It's just human nature, it's just part of how people are. But also remember, you're gonna take joy in the fact that when your channel does start getting a little bit of momentum and some subscribers, a year later, when they look at your YouTube channel, or if, you, if it comes up again in conversation, they see the subscriber count, they might be like, well, I didn't know that you did it like seriously or anything. It's kind of funny, but when it comes to friends and family, trust me, you can post your videos on Facebook, you might get a few views that way. Some people might watch it, but when it comes to friends and family, really keep your expectations low, hoping that they will subscribe to your channel or watch your videos. Just, it's just the way it is and just try not to take it personally. They'll come around when your channel starts doing better. Trust me. Number six, sometimes finding yourself on YouTube takes time. Now my channel now, I think we're starting to go on towards 6,000 subscribers after a year. And 
you know, I still don't feel I've, I'm anywhere even close to finding my stride on YouTube yet, but we're getting there. For example, when my channel started, I did some beginner guitar videos, lesson videos that I thought were really good, really, it's like, man, this would be a godsend to me if I was a beginner. Well, it didn't get a lot of views. It takes time. It takes time to get into the algorithm. It takes time for people to see them. It takes time for people to discover who you are. You're a creative being. It takes time to really convey all your creativeness onto YouTube. As for myself, I still haven't quite found my stride yet, but we're working on it. We're getting there. Number five, there are good people out there. A lot of us, when we think of YouTube, we think it's a haven for you know, hate comments and a lot of negativity, fighting, and some channels can be that and have that. But there are a lot of good people out there. Those are the people you want to listen to. Of course, constructive criticism is good, but there are good people out there. And if there's one thing that YouTube has taught me in the past year, it's that there are good people out there. I've seen a lot of generosity, a lot of kindness, support for my channel, my Patreon, tips for my channel. There are good people out there. A lot of people, I, I know some people that wanted to get into YouTube, but they're like, I don't think I can handle the negative comments. Well, you can just disable the comments, it, it really, but I always found it better to let the comments go, because then you have a sense of community, people contributing their thoughts and talking. There are good people out there. Don't let negative comments sway you from starting a YouTube channel. Number four, YouTube is great, but also make sure to make time for everything else in your life. Now this can be a delicate dance, a delicate balance. You know, for most of us, we have to work day jobs. We do YouTube on the side, on our extra time. But it's very important, as consumed as we can be about YouTube and succeeding, that we have to also balance it with our life, our relationships, family, going to the gym, you know, keeping up with the housework. It's very important because for someone who's very driven or very creative or both, you could definitely put yourself away in a room and just make videos for a few weeks. And it's like, man, I gotta get out and check on the sunshine. But you wanna make sure that you try and balance everything in life. And you know what? If you take a weekend off to be with your significant other or you know, have some you time, your supporters, they'll understand. Whether it's YouTube, Patreon, whatever. They're probably really good people and they'll understand. But it's important to make time for the other things in life too. Where, what number are we on? Is this number three? Friends, number three, YouTube will tell you a lot about the person that you're with. What do I mean by this? Well, YouTube is for creative people, and creative people, you're like an artist. What happens at home is gonna tell you a lot about your relationship and who you're with. People that are supportive and they understand, they'll support you with your ventures. Now, I'm not saying, hey, let's get 25 grand of production and I'm gonna start making YouTube videos full time. No, if you're being responsible and working full time and doing YouTube on the side, of course. If you're with people that try and squash it, and there'll be people out there that, that will do that, believe me, I know what it's like. I know it's like being in a relationship with someone who really tries to squash it and take it away from you. You don't wanna be with them. And you don't wanna be around people that, again, positive constructive criticism is good, but you really don't wanna hang around people that are kind of, you know, trying to rip apart your dreams and your goals and what you want to do. So remember, YouTube will tell you a lot about the person you're with. Number two, consistency is key. I don't, I, you know, I don't technically follow a set schedule for when I release material, but I try and be as consistent as I can. For people that, you know, I'll go on some channels and say, oh, what's this channel about? They'll have a video, and then I'll look at it, and I'll be like, well, you know, they don't have a lot of subscribers. I, you know, what's going on here? You know, this video was kind of cool. I liked it. But then I look into their videos and I'm like, wow, you know, like they haven't put out a video in four months and they haven't, you know, it's, it's kind of hard. I can see how people would lose interest and unsubscribe from a channel that really is not overly active. So for what I, what I like to do is I try to at least put out a few videos a week. Usually it's more than that. But again, sometimes in life things come up, things happen. But no matter what, I still try and put out a few videos every week. You want to, you know, show people that your channel is alive and that you're being fairly consistent with putting out content. Again, I see a lot of channels that have had a lot of potential, but they're not posting regularly or even semi-regularly. You want to be consistent. Number one, YouTube is a marathon. It's not a race. 
patience is key. Hell, I've had this channel for a little over a year and I've got a long way to go. I talked to someone, I won't mention the name, but I talked to somebody and they gave me really good validation. Uh, this person, their channel's really doing well. I think they've got 100,000 subscribers in a year. They're, I think they're around 250,000 subscribers, quarter of a million subscribers, that's pretty amazing. And I had known this person from uh, former circles I used to be in years ago, and I had talked to her online last week, and I said, hey, I have a question for you. I know you'd be honest with me. And she said, yeah, of course. I said, your channel's doing great, and I'm very happy for you. My channel, in a year, went to 5,000 subscribers. Is that good? And she said, Brian, you know what? In this day and age, with how competitive YouTube is, with everyone having production, to go from zero to 5,000 subscribers in a year is amazing. And she said, I've been at my channel for, I don't know if it's almost 10 years, but it just seems like the past few years have really started to take off for her. And I'm very happy, she's a wonderful human being. I'm very happy for her. I'm happy for anyone who succeeds. But it's definitely a marathon, not a race. I see a lot of people though, that I will talk to, they, they posted a few videos and they don't get any views and they get discouraged, or they're not making tons of money. Like if you're really looking to make money, you're better off having a good full-time job because most of the people that make any serious money from YouTube, it's a big investment and a lot of time. I would never discourage people. You know, I, I've had some friends who are very talented musicians uh, complain to me about what's wrong with people. Why don't they watch this or watch that? Or, you know, they put up a video here and there and they wonder why, hmm, uh, you know, why, why do I not have more subscribers? Well, again, look at what I said in the top 10. For me, I treat YouTube like a job, right? It ain't paying me like a job, but that's okay. I'm okay doing this. This is part of my passion, and if there's a payoff down the road, fantastic. But I love doing it. It's, it's part of who I am. It's part of me as an artist. I love to create. I love to interact with people. I love to put out information. I love YouTube. But again, it's a marathon, not a race. So if you really want to do this, you know, you got to be prepared for the long haul. Don't just put out a video or two and then get discouraged and think, well, people don't, geez, it probably takes a year to even really get into the algorithms. So it's a marathon, not a race. So think of that before you start a YouTube channel. I hope that helps guys. Remember, practice hard, but practice smart, and we'll see you soon.